And from drilling platforms at sea to a natural gas pipeline, the industrial Internet of Things makes possible a range of new business processes throughout the energy supply chain. Here at TIA 2015 Network of the Future Conference to tell us a lot more about digital oil fields is Blake Burnett. He's director of equipment R&D at Baker Hughes Pressure Pumping. And also on the program is Chris Josephy, manager of business solutions at EP Energy and panelists. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Uh, it's a really interesting subject, uh, digital oil fields or, or smart fields, sometimes it's sometimes called. Um, I looked at a stat uh, just uh, very recently in this space. It's estimated that by 2015, the value of smart fields or digital oil fields services is expected to exceed $200 billion. That's a growth of more than 40% of the current market size. Uh, Blake, I want to start with you. What are the primary drivers of this spike in growth? Well, um, I think the, the, the first driver is probably the big crew change that's coming up. Um, uh, you know, the older generation is retiring and the younger generation is coming online that expects um, more high tech things. But also, um, today there's a lot of manual operations in the, in the oil field that, that can be automated and can be, uh, can be improved upon using, using digital techniques. Chris, anything to add to that? No, I agree. I think there's there's a lot of opportunity for optimization. It's an older industry, as Blake alluded to. There's, you know, uh, I think people hear 80-20 kind of rule. I think it's more like a 60-20 for us. Your, your operators are either 60 or they're 20. And so um, taking kind of those processes that have been around for 30 years and bringing them into the digital age is something that the industry needs to do if they're going to, um, you know, be optimized for the future. Chris, as you uh, may know, there was a digital uh, oil field uh, U.S.-based summit uh, just uh, several months back called the IQPC Summit. I know you didn't attend that summit, but I uh, wanted to reference it, reference it for this reason. Um, the focus and the topic for the summit was this, and I'll read this off my page, taking digital oil field capabilities from amplifying to optimizing with full cycle digital oil field technology integration. Can you break that down for us and tell us what that means? Yeah, uh, you know, kind of phase one of the digital oil field is, is, is pretty basic. It's, it's, a, it's connections. It's uh, do I have my infrastructure in place to measure what I want to measure, to bring communications back from the field to where it can be useful. And so, you know, with that comes, it's just a lot of data. And that's been around for, for frankly, quite a while. Um, the industry has always been able to measure production uh, measure certain key parameters. So beyond that is optimization. And optimization really requires a synthesis of a lot more data. And so it's not just the fact that you can get that data back, it's that what are you going to do with it? And it's not enough just to, to give it to someone. You can't give someone kind of a deluge of, of information and expect them to do something with it. You've got to be smarter about how you bring that data together and how you present it back to the person who needs to make the decisions. Uh, Blake, I mentioned in the introduction about the, or the advances uh, in industrial Internet of Things. Um, what do these advances mean to uh, process automation companies, uh, OEMs out there, and energy companies? Well, I think that there's, there's huge efficiencies that can be gained through, um, through monitoring tank levels and things like that remotely. Um, uh, I think on a, in a, on a much larger scale, moving forward, the the real advantages are actually going to be in data analytics, big data analytics. Um, one thing I talked about in the last panel I was, I was doing was how combining um, multiple sensors, you know, if you have four sensors, historically we thought you have four pieces of data. Well, really you have 15 pieces of data. It's just a human cannot, cannot um, consume that data and cross-correlate that data completely, whereas, whereas a computer can. So, so I think, I think going forward, you know, we, the industry since the 70s has been generating enormous amounts of, of seismic data. And then, and then you have the, all the logging data from when you're drilling. And then you have, you have completions data from hydraulic fracturing and, and things. And then you have production data. And I think, I think when you start correlating all those massive amounts of data, I think, I think um, uh, we're going to see huge efficiency gains and, and um, improvements in recovery from the wells from all that data. 
Chris, certainly uh, IIoT, IIoT, Industrial Internet of Things, has hu huge implications and significance for a company like EP Energy. Uh, what are some of those top uh, benefits, if you will? Uh, well, I'll take an example that, that Blake just gave, which is tank levels. I mean, something like that, for example, where in, in traditionally you would require a person to climb up on top of a tank, drop a, a basically a plumb bob down into the tank, bring it back up to measure the height, uh, you have that can be fully automated now where you have sensors that measure the height of oil in a tank and send that back. So you're able to, uh, you know, for us, when we automated that process, we saved our, uh, we saved our team 30 minutes of, of manual entry time, uh, not to mention countless hours of going around to physically visit uh, tanks. So you save a lot of time from your operations side. And then the same kind of technology can be layered on in the analytics space where it's not just about measuring and, and saving that time. It's now that you've got that measured, you can start knowing the levels of your tanks. You can start automatically dispatching out trucks to go pick up loads of oil. Uh, you can know exactly how much oil was, was sold based on the level that that, that tank drops. Uh, and so there's a lot of examples. And that's just one, one sensor, but it, it can kind of, you know, go through a whole range of, of uh, processes and a whole range of use cases. And so you can imagine that scales up to kind of countless examples beyond that. Now, is that example referring to either wellhead sensors or vibra vibration sensors or oh, both? On that one, it's, it's a level sensor that's on a tank, which would be at your well site. Um, obviously, wellhead sensors, uh, tubing, casing pressures, um, temperatures, you know, downhole sensors. I mean, there, there's a lot of examples in that space as well. Can vibration sensors prevent um, or at least monitor equipment failure? Yeah, that would be critical for a lot of our central production facilities. So you have very large facilities that process uh, the production from perhaps dozens of wells for us. And in those cases, we have very large compressors that run those facilities. When those compressors go down, you don't just lose production from a single well, you could lose production from an entire field, uh, and that can take a lot of time to ramp back up. So even once you fix it, you know, it, it, the wells don't just pop back on. They take a lot of time to recover. So you could be talking about days of kind of lost production. And so being able to better predict what's going on with those compressors is, uh, by something like a vibration sensor would be a critical piece of data. Blake, I want to talk briefly about um, uh, both of your presence here at TIA 2015 Network of the Future. We talked in our pre-show uh, discussion about um, the importance of, of uh, telecom guys knowing the, the real use cases and value for verticals like yours and, and digital oil fields, if I can call it that. Um, and um, it's important for them to learn about that and it's important for you to hear um, how they can facilitate and support that as well. Uh, what's your, um, is this the first uh, conference uh, of, of this type that you've been to and what's your experience so far with that? Um. Yeah, I think this is my the first conference I've been to like this. I've been to an SPE, digital oil field conferences, in the past. Um, but as far as being focused on networks and communications, I think so. And um, I, I learned a lot. This has been, this has been a very valuable conference for me. Um, uh, and, and so I think that, um, that I'm going to continue to attend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, is it a networking benefit? Is it... Um is, is it an educational uh, It's experience? actually been both for me, and, and I, picked up some, I picked up some tidbits of information and some things this morning. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, actually one, one, uh, one thing that I heard this morning that was really exciting for me that, that might seem kind of out there for most people, which was the, the, uh, how quickly the, the autonomous vehicles are moving and coming, coming online because um, that has huge implications for me personally in, in in my sector of the business. Um, you know, for the past 25 years, I've been implementing digital oil field technologies, right? And, and one thing I always run up against in the business cases is, well, it doesn't do any good to automate one particular job because you still need a driver to drive the truck. Mm. Well, the, the Japanese have developed something called truck trains where one person drives one truck and the rest of the trucks follow automatically. Mm. Um, uh, you know, autonomous vehicles are, are are starting to come along a lot quicker, I think, than, than even Google predicted. Google said 2020. Um, and, so, and so that opens up the doors. When, once the, the, the need for drivers gets reduced, 
then our ability to automate other features of the of the process, um, those needs will become more apparent. Chris, you think it's a benefit to have uh, you folks here at a telecom event so that we can understand what your needs are and to facilitate those? Yeah, absolutely. In kind of preparation for this event, I sat down with my telecom team, sat down with some of our vendors of our edge devices, and I kind of challenged them. I said, what I'm missing is kind of the, the marriage of our, of our industries because I feel like you know, our telecom team does a great job. Uh, the vendors have been very receptive are very responsive to our needs. However, the deeper understanding of where we can take this technology, what our use cases are, what would be a huge benefit to us in the future, and what, what our industry is going to look like in the future is still to me a little bit of a gap. So it was exciting to get in front of this crowd and kind of challenge them and say, I, as a, as a consumer, as an operator, I'm looking to, to, to the people here at this conference to kind of tell me where the future is and bring that proactively to us. Don't wait for me to come mm. to you with my problem and you solve a very limited piece of that. Bring me your vision and let me see where you think this, this technology can go and, and let me see how that fits in with, with where we're going. Blake, you mentioned you've been in the digital oil field uh, uh, space for quite some time. What do you see over the next three years for that space? Well, I see exponential growth, right? And especially, I mean, one, one thing, that came up today is, is, you know, the price of oil has fallen from $100 a barrel to 50. And, and that's created a, a need for efficiencies to the point where people's backs are against the wall. They've got to figure out how to survive. And the way to survive is to lower cost, right, in this environment. And, and those who, who do implement uh, digital technologies to gain efficiencies and lower costs, lower operating costs will survive and those who don't won't. And so, and so it's, it's imperative. Well, we hope uh, as a, a telecom industry can provide uh, some solutions to maybe some even impending problems that we don't see just yet. Um, but it's interesting uh, what the drivers are for digital oil fields, for smart fields, um, and sort of the uh, 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 issues around economy and what's uh, driving that as well. Uh, Chris and Blake. Thanks for your time. I know we're getting towards the end of the day here on day two of the three-day conference, and we appreciate your time. Right, thank, thank you very you. much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. And uh, for all of TIA Now's coverage of TIA 2015, Network of the Future, as always, you can log on to TIANow.org. So long.